right. So uh, today's lecture is um, uh, the continuation of uh, the quantization of gauge theories. So in, in the last lecture, we've seen how to um, how to deal with gauge invariance through the uh, Fadev Popov procedure. So the result of the procedure of eliminating gauge invariance from the uh, correlators was to add the gauge fixing term to the uh, um, to the action for young males, and also to add this. Uh, so the gauge fixing term we already found in Maxwell theory, but now in young males we also add this um, so-called ghost action. The ghost being B and C. So uh, in this lecture we'll. Uh, deal with uh, the propagators and the Feynman rules, and we'll give an example of how to calculate uh, Feynman diagram with them. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, in order to calculate the um, propagators, uh, we have to first. Uh, identify the quadratic part of the action. So the quadratic part of the action, well, so for, um, in the case of um, uh, Yang Mills, it's uh, rather uh, simple. I mean, the quadratic part is, of course, just Maxwell with just an index A that's trivially summed over. So, uh, as usual, we do the par partial integration um, of one derivative to put all derivatives in between the a's. And then now, since there's this uh, extra index a, we also put a delta a b. Because in principle, the propagators should go from uh, random indices, so a mu a to a mu b put a delta AB, but uh, it, it just means it's trivially summed over. Uh, the same, same thing for the ghost action. Uh, the quadratic part, it's, uh, as you see here, it's one derivative and then the other is covariant, but of course the, the part without uh, fields is, uh, again, the normal derivative. So I have uh, BACB, with delta AB, since again we want to um, connect uh, arbitrary index fields with arbitrary index, um, but then I have just uh, this uh, simple minus del squared, <coughs> like for a, a scalar field. <coughs> so from this we derive the gluon propagator first. Um, as you see, as I said, the quadratic part is just the quadratic part that you would get for uh, Maxwell, the Maxwell action with a delta AB. So correspondingly, the um, propagator for Yang Mill for the gluon is the propagator for a photon, the abelian case, uh, times a delta AB. So again, we have this uh, parameter alpha, remember, that comes from the um, gauge fixing term. And again, we have uh, the choice, uh, um, well, the, the, the gauge, quote unquote, to, to uh, put alpha equal to one to, and to cancel these extra terms and just get a propagator for um, for a scalar with some delta deltas, delta AB and delta mu. And uh, the ghost propagator, um, despite the fact that, you know, they're anti-commuting, so anti-commuting makes you think that this should look like uh, the fermion action, but it's actually not. It's actually just the scalar uh, propagator times delta AB. So it's one over K squared times delta AB. Next, we write the um, 
uh, interaction part of the action. So uh, for the Young Mills part, we have a three gluon part, one with one derivative d mu, and um, uh, so it's d mu a nu, and then a mu a nu. So one of the uh, uh, one of the indices on d mu um, is connected with another a mu, and then uh, on this a nu with another a nu. Um, so there's this uh, uh, um, cubic part with uh, the structure function, GFABC. And then there's um, a four gluon part. Now without derivatives, a mu, a nu, a mu, a nu, but uh, arbitrary indices up here. And of course, since there are arbitrary four indices, um, I cannot just use just one um, uh, structure constant. Moreover, the structure constant comes together with the coupling constant G. So this is G squared over four times two structure constants where one index is um, contracted and then we're left with four indices. And then uh, for the ghost part, we also have the contribution with uh, one gluon, since remember, for the gluon, we had uh, the covariant derivative in here, and the covariant derivative has a term with the gluon. So now we have uh, this part, derivative, well, I can, I, I can, uh, uh, partially integrated back onto B, the, the normal derivative, and uh, and then there's this gluon A mu, and uh, the other ghost C C. As usual, as usual, we can define um, pa uh, path integrals, um, and. Uh, we can also define the free energy. So this would be Z by the integral equal to E to minus the free energy. And uh, of course, we have path integral over the young Niels field, but now we also have uh, to do a path integral over the these ghosts B and C. Remember, they are independent. I had a notation last lecture with eta and eta bar. But when I wrote eta and eta bar, um, I also thought of eta and eta bar as being independent. So B and C are truly independent, so they have to be um, path integrated uh, independently. And also, um, so the path integral gets E minus this effective action with the um, gauge fixing term and the ghost term. But uh, moreover, um, since now we have path integrals over A, but also B and C, we also have to put sources for A, but also for B and C. So I, I add this, uh, I have to add this term, um, integral J dot A, that's the usual thing for the path integral to be, depend on J, but also the path integral will depend on uh, some psi c multiplying c from the left and psi b multiplying b from the right. Since c is always on the right and b is always on the left. b is like eta bar. All right, uh, also as usual, we define the effective action uh, which generates uh, endpoint functions of the one one pi uh, type as the Legendre transform of the free energy, uh, meaning it's the free energy plus uh, this term uh, integral j dot a psi, psi dot c classical plus b classical uh, times psi b and. This transform therefore depends 
on A classical, but also on B classical and C classical. Um, so this is now quantum effective action, not only because uh, it has something other than the classical action, it has quantum correction, but moreover, it has dependence on other fields and uh, calling, calling uh, B classical and C classical is a kind of definition because of uh, this Legendre transform. Uh, there's nothing classical about the ghosts. Uh, you know, the ghosts are not, uh, not something you can measure. measure. Uh, they're not real particles. They're, they're, they're imaginary things. We had this determinant of M that we exponentiate to get uh, the, the ghosts B and C. But um, so, so the ghost B and C, because of the, our construction, appear in, in the final diagrams and such, but uh, do, do not appear uh, in uh, experiments. So uh, putting uh, B classical and C classical, it's a kind of, uh, uh, well, mathematical definition, but not uh, a physical thing. And also now we can um, take uh, derivatives of this Legendre transform relations as usual and obtain, well, usually we uh, obtain, uh, first of all, uh, a classical as, um, um, as minus the derivative of W with respect to J. Um, uh, and then, so, uh, so that was uh, just because uh, this uh, left-hand side, gamma, does not depend on J. So you take uh, the, the functional derivative with respect to J, left-hand side is zero, then here you get the W dJ, and then here you get a classical. So that's this first relation. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and, then, uh, and then the effective action does depend on a classical, but not through this term, only through this term. So uh, the result is just J mu. So this was um, what we had before, and we just do the same thing for these other terms. So, for the ghost B and C, again, the same uh, trick, you know, um, the, uh, the left-hand side, the effect, quantum effective action does not depend on Xi C or Xi B. So functional derivative of it is zero. Then here we get functional derivative respect of W with respect to Xi C and Xi B. Um, and here, uh, the panda is linear, and the result is uh, C classical or B classical. And um, um, yeah. <clears throat> um, So uh, the only uh, thing to remember is that uh, I mean, B and C are anti-commuting, and also then also um, um, uh, Xi C and Xi B are anti-commuting objects. And when I wrote uh, derivative like this, um, uh, I mean um, vertical. It's understood. Uh, it's understood as being uh, um, as usual from the right, from the left. Excuse me. Right. So uh, so then the W dxi b uh, this dxi c plus uh, c classical equal to zero, and then for c classical is minus dW dxi c. But then for this other term. Xi B is actually on the on the right, uh, so to put it, um, 
uh, on the left, I have to anti-commute would be, so I get the minus sign. So that's why you get this plus here. Um, and then, again, um, uh, now I take the derivative of quantum effective action with respect to B and uh, C. And uh, it doesn't depend, free action doesn't depend on them, only de depends only linearly here. And uh, uh, to get, uh, uh, so the derivative is, is from the left, so uh, derivative uh, with respect to B uh, will get plus psi B, this is this. But uh, in order to um, put uh, C to the left, I have to anti-commute to uh, psi C. That's why I get a minus sign. All right. Um, then uh, let's de derive the vertices from the interaction action. So first of all, we have this three gluon vertex that, um, I mean, should come from the three gluon vertex should come from this um, um, three gluon uh, interaction term in the classical action. So it's G of F A B C, D mu A nu A, A mu B, A nu C. And uh, I want to write this, remember, as integrals. So first of all, I want to write it in momentum space. <clears throat> so integrals over momenta k, p, and q, or 2 pi uh, to the 6. Um, <clears throat> then uh, 1 over 3 fa factorial, uh, as usual, remember from the um, scalar case that we have to put 1, one over 3 factorial to uh, cancel some uh, multiplicity. Uh, and then uh, these arbitrary index fields, so the, the external gluons have to have arbitrary indices, a mu a, a mu b, a rho c, and also the arbitrary momenta, k, p, and q. And then I have to, uh, and then what's multiplying this, what's multiplying this, what the, the integrand in here, should be uh, called the vertex. So this should be gay tilde, j, um, excuse me, gamma tilde, uh, with indices mu nu rho, a, b, c, and depending on k, p, and q. Okay. But moreover, uh, as you remember, there's the overall momentum conservation that delta function. So uh, there's actually 2 pi to the d, delta d, k plus q. Uh, plus p, and uh, and then this is the this is the vertex. I mean, well, reduced vertex, so to speak, um, that we want to calculate v minu rho a b c depending on k p and q. <clears throat> so to write this, um, I have to remember that the vertex should be symmetric in all the external lines. So <clears throat> to understand that, um, we, uh, we try to see how I can uh, rewrite this interaction term as uh, the same kind of interaction term, but with indices permuted. Um, so derivative uh, so derivative uh, being um, um, instead instead of having derivative uh, with respect to mu having this derivative with respect to rho so uh, <clears throat> so how do we do this? Well, um, so first we uh, 
Um, so we have to So we have to partially integrate the the, uh, the derivative. So let's partially integrate. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have to. I have redefined this here. A new row to into mu nu. Therefore, uh, new row into mu nu. Uh, So um, so I think I uh, I think I partially integrate it here. <clears throat> Um. Oh no, sorry. I sorry. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. Uh, I don't need to uh, to partially integrate. Sorry. I I just need to um, redefine the indices really. So I uh, let me see. So yeah, so I define mu into rho, and uh, and so, so mu into rho, and I suppose rho into mu. So rho into mu, but then I also have to define c into a, and um, uh, c into a, and then A into C, yeah. <clears throat> so I, I switch C with B, C with uh, A. I switch C, C with A, and then, uh, then I get this term delta menu, but then with, and this is, um, C and A. Um, but now, now I have to rewrite, um, I have to redefine Um, I have to, uh, s sorry, I have to s switch uh, 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 C into A in FABC. So um, if I uh, switch, so FABC is totally anti-symmetric, really. So uh, here I wrote it uh, in two, uh, in two uh, steps, but really, FABC is totally anti-symmetric, so that means that if I switch the indices C with A, I get a minus sign. So that cancels the minus sign. So I get this new term. All right, so. Uh, uh, so since the derivative was not partially integrated, it still acts on the same 
uh, on the same A. And uh, that means it that acts on the same momentum P. So uh, that means that I have, so from this star, I would get derivative acting on, on the exponent here, e to the i p x, um, get e, e to the p mu, i p mu uh, in here with a minus from here, and then delta nu rho. Whereas in here, uh, del rho on the same e to the i p x gets i p rho, and then delta mu nu. So you have this combination along uh, the um, um, along the permutations, and this should multiply the usual uh, the usual vertex. So if the interaction term has G F A B C, then the vertex should be minus G F A B C. F A B C, if you remember. So, uh, in the uh, scalar case, phi phi cubed over three factorial, the vertex is uh, so, so g phi cubed over phi uh, over three factorial. The the vertex is minus g. So, that that's the logics and that I get uh, g F A B C. So in total, then. Uh, I get uh, so minus GFABC <laughs> times this thing, so <clears throat> so plus GFABC P mu delta nu rho. So this is this term plus IGFABC delta nu rho, and then minus the other. The other term is with some relative minus, and delta nu rho is um, is turned into delta mu nu. Okay, and then of course the uh, uh, the other the other um, so I, I got in this way two terms in the vertex, but this is um, this should be symmetric, completely symmetric, and the other. Terms are when I partially integrate del mu um, from this a into this a or this a, right? So therefore, getting so from here I would get terms with p. From the, here I would get uh, terms with k, and from this I would get terms with q, and. Uh, Correspondingly, after you partially integrate, you have to do the corresponding symmetrization. I will not do it, but uh, the result is like this. Looks uh, nice and symmetric. All right, now for the uh, four gluon vertex. Again, we have to uh, take out the delta function, the, the two pi to the d delta function um, of the four external momenta. And then the resulting uh, term in the action is uh, is called, will be called V, uh, you know, rho ABC. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, sorry, you know, refer, um, well, sorry, there's an extra minus sign. So there's an extra minus sign for going from the term in the action into the term in, into the vertex. So um, um, so the, the term in the action is, as we wrote, g squared over 4, 4 a's with two uh, structure constants with one index contracted. <clears throat> so this is what I wrote here. But uh, 
here the, the, there were uh, contractions of with one of with three and two with four. But remember that I have, in order to get the vertex, I have to put independent indices on the gluon. So I write A mu A, A mu B, A rho C, A sigma D. And then the contraction. So the contraction is one with three, delta mu rho, and two is four, delta mu sigma. And then this contracted, um, uh, this uh, structure constant constructed uh, over one index. Um, uh, Oh, and I've done some rewriting of the indices. Uh, let's see. So yeah, in the f in the first uh, uh, form, it was rewritten as a. This was rewritten as a, and here I had b, c, d, e. Now I write, of course, a, b, c, d, and the contraction with e. Moreover, the contraction was uh, like this. But now I can uh, first up and second down. Uh, but now I, um, sorry, the first thing this is contracted is one up and one down. But uh, of course, as I said, FABC is completely anti symmetric. So I can flip this to the last position and get a minus, then flip this to the last position, I get another minus. So. This is equal to the contraction with indices on uh, the last um, on the last position as well. Um, <clears throat> so the vertex. Uh, so um, uh, So the vertex then from this thing is uh, with a minus, minus g squared um, delta mu rho delta nu sigma with this contraction. And uh, um, Why there was a common um, multiplicity of four? Uh, let me think. This. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. The point. The point is that. Uh, um, there, are, yeah. So, so there are twenty-four terms uh, coming from the uh, four uh, factorial, the general four factorial permutation of the external lines. You know, for the sc scalar case, there is always uh, for five to the four. There's four factorial permutations. Um, but out of these, I write six as six uh, uh, um, per permutations permutations will change the indices uh, the independent indices um, whereas another uh, factor of four will not change the indices so let's see uh, if I identify one change of indices that doesn't change this so mu rho mu sigma uh, oh yeah uh, yeah if I change mu, mu with rho, uh, mu with rho and mu with sigma, uh, and correspondingly uh, c with a and b with d, d, c with a and b with d, uh, as you see, this doesn't change this term. And um, 
I can probably find uh, uh, corresponding uh, other uh, per permutations. But um, uh, but then the other con uh, corresponding permutations you can find yourself using the uh, the symmetries that I described. That basically that uh, F A B C is totally anti-symmetric, and then in here you just permute indices and redefine indices, and uh, you find um, this um, vertex. All right. Finally, there's the uh, the vertex with two um, ghosts and one gluon. So that comes from uh, that comes from the part. Uh, I mean, this part. Right. There was a derivative on b, an a mu, and a c. All right. So the derivative, uh, well, here I define uh, B as having momentum Q, so the derivative on it gives uh, IQ, IQ mu. And then in front, I have minus G uh, FABC. So that's, that's the uh, vertex. Now, here I wrote just pure YMLs, but in principle I could think of also adding matter. I mean that's really more more interesting. Uh, in particular, um, what's most most interesting is the interaction of um, of uh, young mills with fermions, and at least that's what happens in the uh, standard model in QCD if you want. Uh, so the, the, the uh, interaction term with fermions uh, arises because of the deri covariant derivative when acting on the fermion. So the covariant derivative has a normal part, the d mu, with delta i j for the corresponding representation of uh, the Amil's group, so so I I want to to have fermion psi alpha, but with an index i in the in the representation f of uh, the uh, of the group G, the Amil's group G, and then uh, the interacting term in the so the interacting term comes from this uh, kinetic term. Uh, psi by i, d mu, covariant d mu, i j, gamma mu, psi g, psi j. So the uh, covariant term has this term with g times the um, uh, the generator t a in the representation f that is with indices i j. So therefore, the vertex is minus g tilde, well, in dimensional regularization, g tilde, where it's g mu to the epsilon over 2, where epsilon is 4 minus d, times gamma mu, which in this is beta and alpha. Uh, so, um, So in, now, uh, summarizing, we have the following um, uh, the following Feynman rules. We have a gluon propagator between a mu a and a mu b with momentum k. We have a ghost propagator between um, uh, b a and uh, c b. Or I guess, yeah. Uh, and the fermion op operator, be uh, fermion propagator be between uh, psi alpha i and psi uh, beta j. There's uh, a gluon three vertex between a mu a, a, 
A new B and A zero with three momenta. Uh, a glue on three vertex, a uh, glue on four vertex, sorry, between A, a mu A, a, new, a B nu, A rho C, and A sigma D. There's a glue on uh, ghost, ghost vertex, ghost B A, C B, and uh, glue on A mu C, and a glue on fermion, fermion vertex, in fermions psi alpha i, psi beta j, and uh, blue on a mu a. So you can write then the uh, corresponding uh, Feynman rules. So the blue on uh, propagator delta mu nu a b is, as I said, just the Maxwell. Uh, the Maxwell uh, propagator with a delta AB. That means delta mu nu minus one minus alpha k mu k nu over k squared, everything over k squared. So in the, uh, in the final gauge, alpha equal to one, is just a uh, scalar propagator with one over k squared with delta mu nu and delta AB. <coughs> Then there's the ghost propagator. Um, I mean, the representation varies from um, from uh, depending on convention, but uh, I chose to write it with a dashed line. <coughs> um, and uh, this is delta a, a b is uh, just again the uh, scalar propagator with delta a b. So delta AB over K squared. There's the usual Fermi propagator, but now since I have uh, Psi alpha in representation, uh, so with index I in, a, in some representation of the group, um, there's also this delta IJ. So it's delta IJ divided by IK slash plus M. We think this is alpha beta. Uh, there's a glue um, on three vertex. So for uh, a mu a with momentum p, a mu b with momentum q, and a rho c with momentum r, is this expression. I wrote it here with g tilde since I use uh, dimensional regularization. <laughs> and then uh, there is a glue on four four vertex. Uh, now without derivative, so the the glue on three vertex had these momenta coming from uh, the derivative in the action, but now the glue on four vertex had no momentum, just. Uh, G squared, or rather G tilde squared, two um, structure constants, and two uh, deltas for the photon indices. Then all of these things uh, permuted accordingly. And then the gluon ghost ghost vertex. Um, I uh, so. This would be uh, V mu A B C of Q is minus G tilde F A B C I Q mu. And the gluon fermion fermion vertex um, is minus G tilde. There are, um, the, um, uh, the, the generator T A in the representation F with indices G I and gamma mu beta alpha. And so these are fermions, uh, these are the, from the propagators and the vertices, but um, I have to remember if I have a fermion, I also have the extra minus one loop, but also 
since for the ghost uh, loop. So the ghosts, as I said, they are truly um, um, quantum objects. So you, they will appear mostly in uh, uh, in loops. At least if I want to do some uh, some calculation of some S matrix or so. Um, and the point is that uh, the minus one for the fermion loop came because of uh, anti-symmetry, because of un uh, anti-commuting uh, fermions in the path integral. Uh, but ghosts are also, also anti-commuting. I mean, they're not fermions, meaning they're not a fermionic representation of the um, of the Lorentz group, but they are anti-commuting, so that so they will also get a minus one uh, if you put a Gauss loop. Um, uh, once again, I remind you that uh, we uh, cal we calculate uh, Green's functions from. Uh, derivatives of uh, W or gamma, but um, uh, and the action is of course uh, gauge invariant and the uh, gauge transformations, but the source term is not. So uh, the Green's functions are not physical observables; they're not uh, gauge invariant. But sums of fine man diagrams could be gauge invariant. Um, in, in the case of QED, I mentioned the fact that there are these IR divergences. Um, I also I me also mentioned that when we'll, we'll uh, study them, we'll see that with some um, some loop diagrams with some tree diagrams, obtaining the same order in the coupling. Um, but with some massless lines, that is, with very small momentum. So this uh, combination of Feynman diagrams is what's, what is uh, physically observable, and that's the one that is uh, IR finite, and that's also the one that will be gauge invariant, that, that therefore. Uh, so physical observables will always be gauge invariant, um, but things that are not uh, observables need not be gauge invariant. Could be by some accident, but need not be gauge invariant. Uh, so the same thing applies for Young Mills. All right, so uh, now let's con consider uh, an example of. Uh, of calculation of a Feynman diagram using these um, uh, these um, Feynman rules. Okay, so uh, one uh, example that I will do is this uh, one loop for the um, for the gluon. So I have um, two, three gluon vertices in here. So remember, so this is a, a one loop calculation for the gluon. Therefore, it can only have uh, two, um, uh, to three vertices for the gluon, but remember that the gluon has also four vertices. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, uh, given what I just told you, this Feynman uh, diagram will be gauge dependent. Uh, moreover, uh, so, um, moreover, will will also depend on. Uh, so, as as part of this gauge event, uh, will be de dependent on alpha. Um, 
alpha, remember, is the coefficient of the gauge fixing term. Um, so uh, I will put the final gauge, alpha equal to one, uh, in other, uh, in, if I would use some other alpha, the result would be different, but also if I would, would if I would use some other gauge fixing type of term, some other gauge, um, the result would also be different. So like in the axle gauge, for instance. All right, so uh, the def definition in here is that there's one gluon coming in with uh, indices alpha and A and momentum P, another gluon coming out with uh, indices alpha prime, A prime, and momentum, also momentum P by momentum conservation. Uh, and I choose the loop momentum to be co called kappa uh, K. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, in the lower line, the momentum is uh, K minus P. And um, since, uh, remember, the, the, the three vertex have to be, um, have to have uh, independent uh, indices uh, outside. So I have to choose here the indices um, beta B and gamma C. And the same here, here I have to choose um, beta prime B prime and uh, gamma prime C prime. And this also, um, is uh, consistent with the fact that uh, there's a propagator here that goes from gamma C to gamma prime C prime, and another propagator here from uh, beta B to uh, beta prime B prime. All right, so I put all the corresponding um, elements. So I have, uh, uh, so I have one propagator, one vertex, one three vertex, one propagator, another three vertex, right? And uh, the integral over over uh, k, right? So integral over d four k d d k over two pi d. This three vertex minus i g tilde f a b c and this combination of uh, momenta and uh, um, and uh, uh, Lorentz indices. Uh, so these combinations are, are because the two the two momenta in the vert. So momenta here it's p, here is k, but here is k minus p. So uh, that's why you have this minus two plus, minus two k plus p here and k minus two p here. Then uh, I have the propagator, the Feynman gauge. The propagator and Feynman gauge is just uh, delta for all indices and times the one over k squared, the scalar propagator. So this is delta cc prime, delta gamma, gamma prime over k squared. Then uh, another three vertex. Uh, uh, for the prime indices. So as you see, it's uh, well up to a minus sign, I guess. Um, no, the minus sign, the minus sign that I put here is, is really from the, uh, from the fermion uh, loop. So the fermion, no, sorry, no. Uh, no, why do I put a minus sign? Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just because I, I sweep, uh, I, I mean, all the momentum are switched. So P goes in here and goes out here. K go, K goes out here, in here, and K minus P in here and out here. So uh, that's why I have everywhere uh, minus sign in the momentum. Otherwise, is the same uh, same vertex, and then another uh, uh, propagator for the uh, for the uh, gluon. 
which is again delta for the indices uh, times uh, one of uh, the momentum. In this case, momentum is k minus p. So uh, summarizing, I mean, there's a bunch of uh, indices being contracted in here, but uh, the result is what? So uh, minus i squared gets a minus, then g tilde squared to um, structure constants uh, con contracted uh, because the delta, the uh, the, the group indices are contracted with deltas. So these two Fs are completely contracted. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, well, sorry, not completely contracted because uh, I have two external line uh, indices A prime, but the others are completely con contracted. And uh, then there's an expression for uh, momenta. Um, and uh, the denominator is you know, like two uh, lines for the uh, scalar, for, for uh, scalar, yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's k squared and k minus p squared. Uh, then the... Um, uh, then we note that, well, by definition, g tilde squared is d squared mu to the epsilon, and also that this um, uh, two structure constants, um, which two indices contracted, and uh, and the corresponding uh, uh, two indices out, is uh, the Casimir C two of g times delta. Um, and uh, and then uh, so by by doing the, this construct and we, we we get this uh, numerator and uh, what do I need to note so um, this thing depends on the external momentum p and on the loop momentum k all right so I, I um, organized here the things like this there's there's a component. Oh no, I didn't organize it, but uh, yeah, we have to think about it. So there's a, a component with uh, uh, with two k's. In the first term here, I wrote k alpha k alpha prime. So the external indices. Then there's a component without. Uh, loop momenta, so p alpha, p alpha prime. There's momentum with uh, with 1k and 1p and uh, the external external indices, so k alpha, p alpha prime, p alpha, k alpha prime. Then there's some contraction times delta alpha, alpha prime, but again, I have uh, two k's, no k's, and 1k. So, um, so what do we get from this? Well, we have basically what we're interested in is uh, the, uh, the integral of uh, one divided by the denominator of k with uh, some index uh, beta divided by the denominator and k uh, beta k gamma divided by the denominator. So one divided by the denominator, uh, we already calculated, it's this thing. This is from the scalar uh, case long, I mean, at the beginning of the course, of the, yeah, of the course. Um, I rewrote it here in terms of in terms of uh, the beta or the beta function, that's the ratio of uh, gamma uh, a plus b to gamma a gamma b. 
Then the other uh, integral we're interested in is k mu divided by the denominator. But the denominator depends on p. So it's k mu divided by k squared, k minus p squared. So this integral has an, uh, has an index mu, but by Lorentz invariance, it can only, uh, the index mu can only be on the thing it depends on, namely on p. So it can only p, be p mu times some other function of, some scalar function of p by Lorentz invariance. Um, now to calculate this, I just mul um, multiply with another uh, p mu, or two p mu for some reason. Um, and then I get 2p squared times this uh, scalar integral is equal to this. And this, uh, this integral uh, decomposes into an integral that doesn't depend on p, so integral over k of 1 over k squared, and uh, an integral that does depend on p but inside uh, this squared, so it's integral over k of 1 over k minus p squared, and then a p squared times an, another integral that depends on p, but that's uh, uh, that's finite, so, sorry, that is, uh, has two uh, denominators now. Now, so this integral has a minus sign, and this other integral has a plus sign. Now, uh, these two things cancel uh, because, uh, because I can shift here k minus p defined as k, k tilde, and then the integral over k is equal to integral over k tilde. So these two things cancel. Um, but you might uh, ask, well, but they're infinite, so how can they cancel? Maybe they give some uh, some uh, some finite part, but f by this calculation, I showed that they're actually uh, uh, the same, so they cancel. And moreover, we know that this thing is zero in uh, dimensional regularization. The, in the integral itself, the thing that looks divergent, is actually zero in dimensional regularization. We calculated that this thing with denominated with plus m squared is just m squared to some power. So when m goes to zero, this goes to zero. So this thing, even though it looks divergent, uh, is actually zero. It doesn't even need to cancel the two terms because in the individual, each of them, those are zero. So then the only thing to calculate is this uh, integral. Um, and, uh, sorry, but this integral, I already calculated it. This is the, this first uh, integral, right? So this, this was uh, 1 over k squared plus uh, times k minus p squared. So I already calculated this thing here. So, um, So I know now I tilde as being p squared. Um, so p squared cancel. So I tilde is just one half of this I this uh, first integral I calculate. All right. And lastly, I have to calculate an integral with uh, k mu and k nu up in the numerator, and the same denominator, k squared, k minus p squared. <clears throat> now, again, I have to use Lorentz invariance, also because, again, uh, this loop integral can only depend on p. This, that's the only parameter, um, Lorentz in, uh, parameter um, in the integral. So. This integral, with in, which has indices mu and nu, can only have something 
with indices p mu p mu. I mean, the indices can only be on momentum p mu p mu, or they can be contracted delta mu mu. So the result of this is some integral uh, called a i a uh, with p mu p mu and plus another term um, that uh, I call i b times p squared just to have the same order in momenta times delta mu nu. And uh, again, the same, uh, the same trick. I, uh, to calculate uh, IA and IB, I have to multiply things with uh, some other momentum. So let's, let's uh, multiply with 2P mu. If I multiply with 2P nu, <coughs> then I get here 2P squared uh, uh, P nu. Uh, P nu, sorry. Uh, and uh, and here I get uh, again 2P squared uh, uh, P, um, uh, P nu because I have P mu times delta mu nu, which is P nu. So it's 2P squared P nu times I, IA plus IB. Uh, and uh, and then on the other hand, uh, multi this is what I supposed to obtain, but the integral itself is the integral with K mu K nu, so multiplying with 2P nu, um, I uh, um, yeah, I get uh, to, with two pinu, I get um, I'm sorry, uh. Yeah, with two p nu, I get uh, two uh, p dot k, p dot k k nu. So this I write as k nu, and then I develop this thing. So uh, two p dot k I write as minus k minus p squared plus k squared plus uh, p squared. Uh, and uh, and the reason I write it like this is because now I can cancel. So in this first term, I can cancel uh, one uh, one term in the denominator, k minus p. In the second term, I can cancel k squared in the denominator. And in the last term, I get the the first p, p squared times the first uh, integral. So so now I have integral k mu over k squared, k nu over k minus p squared, and um, uh, and the integral with uh, k nu. Uh, K nu with uh, two denominators, uh, I've calculated here as being uh, P mu times uh, this integral over two. So P nu times this integral over two. Uh, and now, again, for these integrals, I use the same trick of um, shifting the momentum. So I shift uh, k minus p, I call k tilde. And uh, then in here I get k is k tilde plus p plus p. So um, this divergent part cancels, and then I get p mu times the, the integral of one over k tilde squared. But I said that this thing, while it looks 
um, divergent. Uh, it's actually not. It's actually zero in dimensional regularization, as I said in here. So, uh, the result of um, this contraction of 2p mu with my integral of k mu k nu divided by this denominator is uh, some function of p, p squared p nu over 2 times the first integral I calculated. But now this gives me uh, a constraint. And I calculate I, I a plus IB, but I have to calculate some other uh, some other uh, um, combination of them. So now I know I a plus I b is this uh, initial integral i two d divided by four. But the other uh, int the other equation is obtained by multiplying uh, this thing with just delta mu. If I multiply with delta mu, then uh, I know I uh, obtain one over k squared. Mm, I cancel the case squared. No, but wait a minute, and I get zero. Yeah, I did, I, I did zero. So the the integral of this thing is zero in dimensional regularization, as I sh as I uh, said before. But uh, by definition, a definition, this is supposed to be equal to this. So now here, if I multiply with delta mu. Nu, I get what? I get uh, p squared times IA, but here I get p squared times delta mu nu delta mu nu is D. So uh, p squared is outside, is a common factor, but then I get IA plus IB times D. So uh, the equation is, so this is equal to pi, P squared I A plus D I B and is equal to zero. Therefore, I A is equal to minus D I B. And I I substitute back in this first equation, and I obtain then that um, uh, I B times uh, one minus D is equal to this scalar integral of four. So IB is minus uh, 1 over 4 D minus 1 times this integral. And then IA is minus D times this. So is D over 4 D minus 1 is scalar integral. All right. So this is how I calculate all the integrals needed in my initial calculation. So my Feynman diagram calculation gave me some uh, large uh, numerator divided by k squared k minus p squared. And as, as I said in here, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't really um, uh, isolate it like this, but there's a term with, there's always a term with uh, two k's, which I can put with in arbitrary indices then maybe multiply it by some p's, but that's another story. So there are always uh, two k's. So there's a two k in here, and there's a two k in here. Then there's terms with uh, one p, p, one k. These are these terms, and then this k times p term. And then there's term with no k's, so that's this term with p alpha p beta, and then this term was p squared delta alpha alpha. So, uh, so yeah, so the so the I calculated the term with no p's. That was this i two d. Then I calculated the term with one k, with the same denominator k mu, with this denominator. That was this, and finally, 
uh, phi mu times this scalar integral here. And finally, the term with two k's and the same denominator. I reduce it to uh, a uh, scalar inter integral IA and IB, which I've calculated here again related to the first scalar integral. So the scalar integral always appears. So that's a f there's a common uh, uh, common factor to uh, to the whole uh, Feynman diagram, and then. There's minus d tilde squared, which is minus g squared mu to the epsilon. Then uh, there's uh, this two uh, contraction of two uh, structure functions, which, as, as I said, is delta a a prime times the uh, quadratic Casimir. And then there's some combination of p's uh, that you can calculate. Uh, I'm using uh, the formulas that I've derived. You can calculate the corresponding uh, combination of p's. And then, um, then I can uh, rewrite the expression for the scale, the scalar integral i to d of p, which was. A gamma function that's divergent, so it's gamma, gamma of two minus d over two, it's divergent at d equal to four, over four pi d to the uh, four pi to the uh, d over two, p squared uh, again to this thing going to zero, and then a beta function. So. I substitute this, so this whole thing, this whole thing is equal to this, right? Uh, and I notice that then, then that, as I said, gamma 2 minus d over 2 is gamma of epsilon over 2, which is divergent, is 2 over epsilon. And everything else is uh, finite. So this beta function is one, and there is some combination of p's, some constants, and so on. So putting everything else, uh, putting everywhere else d equal to four, I obtain this simple um, result for the uh, Feynman diagram, which is what it is proportional to uh, delta a a prime. So for the gluons, um, uh, for the group indices have uh, delta a b, that's perhaps uh, expected because uh, there would not be uh, another um, two index invariant on the group. Um, and uh, it's divergent. There's this. Uh, there's ah. There's this two over epsilon that's divergent. And then there's um, uh, there's a part uh, there's a part that depends on momentum, but uh, has Lorentz indices, but there's a part that depends on momentum and the part that doesn't. Um, well, I guess I'm, uh, uh, I'm missing p squared here. Otherwise, this doesn't make any sense. Um, Right, there was a p squared here, and anyway, that was dimensions that don't work out. So, uh, has to be obviously there, has to be there. Uh, so, so this is the result for the Feynman di di diagram. 
Now I have to remember to you that uh, this result is uh, still gauge dependent. Uh, so this result doesn't mean anything. Um, by itself, this Feynman diagram doesn't calculate anything that you can observe. You only can sum it with something else to get something uh, that uh, you can measure, right? So, um, so uh, there's a gauge invariance, gauge invariance uh, acting on uh, the external gluons. Uh, sorry, the, the, the gauge um, transformation that can act on uh, external uh, gluons. So, uh, so you can calculate this propagate this uh, correction to the propagator uh, in uh, some other gauge like the axle gauge and get a different result, or put uh, alpha to some other uh, value rather than than one, get some different result. So, um, so in order to uh, to get uh, something that is uh, observable, you have to always uh, sum corresponding diagrams, uh, and also to think about whether you can observe the thing that are outside, right? Whether they are uh, observable. So. Um, in this case, they're not. All right. Uh, I think that's uh, everything that I wanted to tell you today. Um, do you have any uh, questions? Well, uh, just again, just uh, to check, can anybody uh, say that they can still hear me? Okay, good. All right, so that means that uh, you probably uh, don't have any questions. So as I said, um, we will... Um, uh, change the hours for uh, beginning next week. So uh, next week will be um, at Tuesday at uh, 10 a.m. Um, and after that, there will be Thursday at 9 a.m. All right, that's it. So see you on Tuesday. <laughs>